Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are assembled in your house today. Yes. We thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you for his redeeming power. We thank you for his wonderful grace. So, Father, we come with thankful hearts into your house. We would lift our voices and hearts in praise and thanksgiving to you. That you will speak your word into our hearts, that you will minister to our souls and spirits, Lord. That you will empower us anew and send us out into this coming week. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There's only one Lord and his name is Jesus. And as we start this service, we just want to declare that, that he is Lord. He is the Lord and he reigns on high. He is the Lord, spoke into the darkness, created the light. He is the Lord, who is like unto him.
your power. Yes, Lord. Father, we just ask that you will show your power in this place today, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord, we pray for your healing touch, Lord. Oh, let's just pray for people that need that touch of God this morning, this afternoon. Let's just pray. Lord, just heal. We want miracles. This is Miracle Valley. We want miracles. One or two people, just pray that. Just pray that out loud today. Sebo, sebo. Sebo. Great it is we pray, yes. Heavenly yes. Father, we lift up your name on high as we come under the cover and the merit of the precious blood of the Lamb. Mm. His blood avails for me, the songwriter says. Amen. His mm. blood avails yes. for me. Yes. But all those that are born of the Spirit, mm. His blood avails. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, with that precious covenant blood of Jesus, Lord, in that covenant is the healing. By his stripes, we were healed. Hallelujah. We call upon the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus. By every spirit of sickness and infirmity we pray and cast them out and set the captives free. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you that your power, send your power, as we've yes. just been singing, yes. we want the healing power, yes. we want you to touch all those who need the healing, healing Lord this day, hmm. Lord, we don't want to be under the anointing, we want to be in a place where the Holy Spirit moves upon us, and that you'll be with us even as we worship you this day. We ask, Lord, that you will do it because your word says so. So, Lord, we believe. Yeah. And we believe without doubting that you'll undertake to touch all those who need a touch from you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Lord, we also pray for the power to be witnesses. As we go out into the world again. Lord, we want to see people saved. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest miracle of all. We we'll just pray for it to happen over and over again in this place. Yeah. Amen. 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 We thank you, Lord, that your word says the anointing yeah. breaks the yoke. Yeah. And I pray that as your word is proclaimed today, that, Lord, you would touch your people in mind, in body, in heart, in soul, and in spirit. We ask these things, Heavenly Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ and through your outrageous grace. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For thine is the power and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. How wonderful. Straight into the presence of God. Absolutely wonderful. It's so wonderful to see so many people here today. Welcome in Jesus' name. We just have, uh, we've had a few birthdays over the last fortnight. June's a very busy time.
for Clintons for me. Um, and but we so I'll just mention a few. I think there's been Irene's 80th. They're all milestones. Um, Jean would be 90. Um, who else? Put your hand up if you if you've had a birthday in the last. Oh, I won't. Okay, it's not. It's rude to ask somebody's age. But Elaine, happy birthday. I'm a big believer in celebrating every birthday you have. Never mind a big milestone. It's great when you get to the milestones. But however, every birthday is a blessing from God. And, uh, and of course, it's, it's, it's my dad's birthday this week as well. On Wednesday. Yes. Well, there you go. And he'll be 90, 92, the ripe old age of 92. And my mum would have been 84. They share the same birthday. Um, but hey ho, she should be celebrating up there. Um, Maud, Maud, happy birthday, Maud. Happy birthday, Maud. Yes, as well. Um, this coming week, um, on Tuesday, we have the prayer meeting, which will be held either in here or the cafe, um, depending on comfortable. Um, chairs for everybody so that on Tuesday the prayer meeting there will be one from 10 a.m. to no it's not 10 a.m. this is all wrong 12.30 to 2.30 everybody welcome to that um, this Tuesday though as well we have a first aid um, day um, kind of an introductory day actually an awareness day for first aid um, so don't all ask me to do CPR on you or anything like that next week. Um, we will be, you know, we'll be, these are things that we have to put into some kind of order. However, a few people have dropped out um, and you will get lunch if that, this is a bit tantalising for you. Um, so if anyone is interested in, in doing the first aid introductory course with us, it's just the one day from 9am till 4, lunch included, just come to Sarah. She's at there at the moment. She'd probably be in the, in the conservatory later. We'd love to have you along. I'm sure it'll be fun as well. So while the people are praying, we can be doing other things, learning how to do what we need to do sometimes when there's casualties. Um, camp. Camp is looming. <laughs> um, so we're frantically, you know, trying to put things together. But of course, it'll be very different this year. Um, so it will be, you'll have a whole new look on camp. Um, so I'm quite excited, to be honest, because there'll be marquees in different places, the children will be in different places, and it, it'll, be, it'll be all very different, but all very exciting, because you will all still get fed in various ways, um, and watered and everything, and we'll have the wonderful meetings um, and prayer meetings that you have as well. So we're really, really kind of preparing for that at the moment. But again, we're just asking if you'd like to see Sarah at the back. She's going to be very busy at the end. Um, if anyone would like to volunteer um, for a different look at camp, you won't have to do probably all that you needed to do in the cafe this year because it will be different. Um, however, we still need those volunteers. So if you'd like to see Sarah again afterwards or, or myself, um, if you really want to get confused. Um, <laughs> yes, so, yeah, we still need those volunteers. And we're about seven weeks away. So seven weeks today, we'll be in the, in the throes of it. Well, actually, you might be having some lunch. But uh, so we're really excited about this gathering this year. Um, so there we are, a few, a few notices. And next Sunday, 2.30. But out ahead, we have on the 24th, um, Steve from Billings and a team. And then at the 1st of July, we also have uh, another wonderful um, apostle, apostle and um, prophet, a preacher um, coming on the 1st, Friday the 1st. So those two Fridays um, you can put in your diary, but we'll meet every Sunday, 2.30. So good to see you. In Jesus' name. So, um... Hey, it's good to stand. The easiest thing to do in the natural is to stand up. Right? That's the easiest thing to do. But the hardest thing to do is to stand with and for Jesus and with all those who claim the name of Christian. Hallelujah. What a privilege. What a privilege. Heavenly Father, 
Please take these material love gifts as well as our voices today. Help us to fit into what you want us to do, each one of us, and to be the men and women with your love, joy, and peace flowing from us for your glory. Thank you, Lord, as these gifts come, these natural gifts, oh, Lord, your plan is for every one of us to be a blessing to each other and a greater blessing to you as well as you bless us in Jesus' name. And as such, the steward comes now, Holy Spirit, fill this place with your power and glory, your divine power, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, stand amongst us and meet every need today in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So please be seated. The steward comes. Can we just, can we just sing a, it's another song? Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's easy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed, hallelujah, blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. G, G major, G. Glory, glory, I won't keep you long. All right, bro. Do you know we've had a terrible couple of days? It's been absolutely. I'm an evangelist, right? And we've spoke to six people in the last um, fortnight that's really been in trouble. We've had people at home. We've had uh, just all sorts going on. And this last two days, the enemy's really had a go at us. So much so that this morning, we were in such a state that. I thought, we're not going to get to church. Yeah. And I thought, what on earth? I realised what it is that's going on. And I said, Lord, I'm not going to do that. I said, I am going to stand for you, Lord, yeah. no matter what Don't goes on, yeah. and we're going to church. Yeah. And then we sing yeah. this. Yeah. So, listen, there's an altar here. It'll be open later. If you've got problems and you can't handle them, get into this river. <laughs> get into this flow. Glory. Yes, tell him you're going to stand for him. Yeah. Tell him your problems, and I'll guarantee you. I've been in this a long time, and I'll guarantee you when you do that, he'll answer you, yeah. and he'll solve your problems. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name.
Glory to God. Sing it again. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes, glory. Yes, you might say, Stuart, what's all that about? <laughs> well, you know something? There's a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah, he's given us a wonderful coat robe of righteousness. Hallelujah. And a garment of praise. Oh, I'm short of breath now. You should remember you don't jump about when you're 83. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just wanted to share this afternoon <clears throat> on something that's been with me for months. And uh, it's strange how the Lord brings these things to you. Um, just several, several weeks ago now, I had a chorus buzzing around in my spirit and I... <laughs> It's not one I'm particularly fond of. The words are wonderful. But it's just one of those that doesn't exactly like my blue touch paper kind of thing. And it's, it's the chorus about delight thyself in the Lord. I delight greatly in the Lord. I delight greatly in the Lord. And this word delight really began to get a hold of me. And I don't know about you, but I love to delight myself in the Lord. Hallelujah. I love, I love that sensation that, Lord, that the Lord pours out upon us, you know, when we're in that communication stage, hallelujah, with him in our prayer times or wherever. It's just a wonderful moment. And, you know, I began to look at in the natural to begin with. The ingredients, something of a Bible study, I suppose, is this. But the ingredients of the word delight, first of all, the, the dictionary definition of it means great pleasure or to please greatly. It's a bit like pleasure supercharged. And the great pleasure, it, it includes joy and excitement and surprise and love. There's all kinds of ingredients. Usually it's reactive to something special. But it's a God-given capacity within humanity to feel pleasure and rejoice in it. Glory. Imagine life without it. You know, I was thinking about this. I thought, you know... Imagine a husband, wife, or a, a close friend, and you're out somewhere with them, and you go past the shop window, and they say, ooh, I would like that. You know, something just catches their eye, and oh, I'd like that. So immediately, your, your, your thoughts go toward next birthday. And, uh, and so you save up. And you, eventually you go to the shop and you purchase this thing. And there's a degree of anticipation waiting for that moment when you're going to present this gift. And the, eventually the, the great moment has come because you've wrapped this parcel carefully. You've put lovely string around it. You bought some paper, especially. 
And it's all a very special moment. And you come to that friend or whatever, and you present your parcel. And you stood there with anticipation in your heart, what's the reaction going to be? And they come out with the scissors, and they clip through the strings, and they open the paper. Thank you very much. Do you want a, <laughs> do you want a cup of tea? You know, that... <laughs> the football match I saw on the TV a, few, a week or two ago, Liverpool and Chelsea, I caught this, the tail end of the second of the extra time. And it got to penalties, those of you that saw that match. It got to penalties. And eventually, of course, Liverpool won. And that crowd went absolutely... They, they, you know, the players jumped all over one another. They went absolutely bananas. And the crowd, the same. Just amazing. But you imagine what would have happened if we had no pleasure or no delight. The players would saunter off with long faces. It was a good match, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good match. <laughs> but friends, God has not made us like that. Hallelujah. He's put the... Oh, I'm, I'm excited about it. The ability is there because God put it there. He, he has this ability, amen, and our, we're made so to share in that ability. And it's expression in, in human terms. It, it comes through relationship. The triggers of it are relationships or meeting friends or your favorite cooking's gone right or there are all kinds of, million and one kinds of things, something beautiful. You know, I've, I've been delighted just over these last two, couple of weeks. Particularly, a couple, of, a couple of years ago, I had a big bed of, of flag irises in my garden. And the, if I got ten, ten stalks out of them, I thought I'd done very well in past years. Because at the top of the garden, in shade, and I decided to move them. So I moved them down the garden along a big wall in the sun. And this year... Absolutely stunning. I've got 70-odd stalks and these powder blue, beautiful flowers. I go out of my back door and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted every day. Glory to God. It's wonderful. And that's in the natural realm. Hallelujah. But the wonderful thing is, there's a realm of delight and pleasure which is only accessible to a born-again child of God. You can't delight or pleasure in someone you have never met or had any relationship with. You can have delight in the God's creation. You can have delight in his miracles. But you're looking from the outside in. But it's wonderful, friends. Hallelujah. You are on the inside looking out. We were created to bring we were created to bring delight and pleasure to God through the fellowship with him. This realm has a dimension which is only possible through the power of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of God working through us. So just so let's have a look at these things. You know we, as we we deal with the, the natural realm this is the supernatural realm. And, and it's, it's very wonderful. His, pr his presence, first of all, we could look at the ingredients or the triggers, if you like, a mixture of both for that, for that delight. And it, first of all, there's his, in his presence. We rejoice in his presence. You know, the, the excitement and the thrill of the, the sense of the presence of God. <laughs> Glory. And there's joy, there's love, and there's peace, and there's excitement, and there's blessing, and there's understanding, and there's comfort, and there's quickening. I like that one. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Ernest, Ernest over here was talking in the prayer meeting several, several weeks ago now, sharing with us how 
He'd been reading the Word of God and he'd felt that quickening. He was getting excited about it as he read the Word of God. And you know, that's the wonderful thing about it, that, that wonderful excitement and thrill. But you're in good company, Ernest. Listen to what David said. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. Glory. We quicken folk. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost quickens us. And you know, sometimes in, in, in the prayer meetings here and other places, I love prayer meetings. Because the wonder of it is, you know, we, we sometimes begin to pray and we're not quite sure where we, what, what we're to pray for or how we're to pray. But as soon as we open our mouth, something happens in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit begins to bubble up inside us and we're quickened. We're excited and thrilled and we're blessed and the Lord gives inspiration on this wise. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Now as we're called to be a delight to our heavenly Father, we take the testimony of Jesus. And Jesus in John chapter 8 spoke these words to the Jews. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak those things. And He that hath sent me is with me, the Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please Him." So let's explore those things as they're critical to our Christian walk. Colossians and Paul, Colossians 1, verse 9 through 11. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray, to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, there's that word again, being fruitful every, in every good work. So those two things, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That keeps that knowledge of God keeps coming up in these statements. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. Praise the Lord. And then in Psalm 37 verse 25, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. So God is desirous, to, hallelujah, it's wonderful that God can delight in us and desires to delight in us. That word ordered is an important word because it, it is a, a, really, a really wide meaning. It means to be, be, to be per, 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 formed and prepared and established, formed and prepared and established. And I want you to bear that in mind. The Lord, he delighteth in his ways. God is working in that good man that's spoken of there. And you know, what a testimony that some of the men in the Old Testament had. As we read in Hebrews 11 about Enoch. And some of you know this scripture so well. For before he was translated, he had this testimony. Can anybody tell me what it was? That he pleased God. Hallelujah. But without, and then it goes on, does that uh, in Hebrews, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise his name. Enoch, apart from being the father of Methuselah, it wasn't it, it, not so many great things attached to his name, but this wonderful thing, right? A statement from Genesis is, for he walked with God. And likewise Noah, praise the Lord, in his, was perfect in his generation, and Noah walked with God. And then Proverbs 3, verse 12, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, 
even as a father the son in whom he delighteth glory. And that leads us in. We come subject to the Lord's direct correction. But that leads us into a wonderful, a wonderful verse to my mind, or verses, out of Jeremiah 9. The Lord delights in many wonderful things. But this, this is the, these are the verses. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Glory, and there's a comma there. <laughs> And then it goes on, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. In these things I delight, saith the Lord. And you say, well, what's that got to do? It obviously involves us. But I was just thinking about this as I read this thing. I thought, it's so wonderful. You know, we're partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. You're partakers of the divine nature. Now, God delights in bringing these things to humankind, loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. And when you get saved, these qualities begin to emerge in your life, hallelujah, because the Holy Spirit's in there. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, those, th those three are important things. Loving kindness. And that's an easy one. Loving kindness, because the Lord has put that new nature within us. And righteousness, the desire to, to live according to God's desire and God's purposes. But the word judgment in the middle. And I thought about that because we know quite a bit about judgment one way or another. But this particular judgment is talking about an ability that the Lord has given us, amen, to discern right from wrong. Amen. That's what it's about. And this phrase is repeated again and again and again in the Scriptures. We're, we have that ability... And it's, it's, wonder, it's wonderful to me. It, it, you know, the ability that, that God has given us to discern, even when things are vague and uncertain, what is right and what isn't. Because the Holy Spirit reveals truth to us. And it's, a, it's such, to me, a very precious thing. And then over in, in Micah, first, uh, chapter 7, verse 18, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgressions of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. I, I love that. He delighteth in mercy. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. Yeah. There my burdened soul found liberty. In Calvary, I'm so thankful that he delights in mercy. And then we come to the Philippians 2.13. And here we have that link with that verse that we mentioned earlier, if I can find it. For it is good, it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now that verse we mentioned earlier it, it, in, Psalm, in the Psalms, in Psalm 37, it's an exact parallel, an exact parallel with, with this. For it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. He's at work in us. 
You know, the purposes of a good man. We spoke about it a moment ago. That, that, that's the link verse. For it's God that worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. It's all about bringing about his life within us. And then in salvation experience itself, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, to the good pleasure of his will. Hallelujah. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So we've got the glory of his grace and the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure. There it comes again, which he hath purposed in himself. And a verse that I suppose everybody that's done any study on this at all will be so familiar with. And I want to misquote it. And I'll see if you're wide awake. <laughs> I'll misquote it. So here goes. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Anybody know? That's a misquote. Read it again. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That includes a deliberate mistake. Right, I'll read the correct version. Go on. He's got his Bible open. <laughs> Delight thyself, this is to read it properly. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And it's that word also. And you know, sadly, I probably quoted that as I quoted it at first. At, at times, we forget the also. And we've got the master of context in the congregation this afternoon, Charles. <laughs> and rightly so, because this particular scripture's got to be uttered in context. And, and the lovely thing of it is this it, it, it includes this statement, includes three verses Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So there's two statements there. Then the third one is, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And then it comes on again. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him. So you've actually got five statements and one is repeated, so there's actually four clear statements that are made there. Amen? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. That bring about the promises. Glory. Hallelujah. And if we move in all of those things, trust in the Lord and do good. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord and then trust also in him. And then what comes out of it? He shall bring it to pass. Glory. He shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and the, thy judgment, that word again, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him that prospereth in, in his way, because of the man that bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. For fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. And so on and so on. And we say, well, how, how is this possible? Because if we, if we fulfill those conditions, we, we desire those answered prayers, our 
our desires and, and the, those requests will be in tune with the Holy Ghost. You've gone quiet on me. They're in tune with the Holy Ghost. We're praying in the Spirit. And God has to answer those, hallelujah, if he gives you it. It might take a while. Don't answer them to all, all things tomorrow. But those wonderful things, that promise is there for us. And for, for David was a master, King David was a master of understanding in this whole area of delighting yourself in the Lord. And the first requirement of delighting ourselves in the Lord, and I'll give you the first scripture that I wrote down here, it was Psalm 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, my law, thy law is within my heart. Hallelujah. And then he goes on in Psalm 112, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Glory. Jesus, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Simple. And David had gotten that in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. And that's the Old Testament era. Psalm 119 is full of the same statements. I will delight myself in the commandments which I have loved. Glory. He's a love, a love for the, he's such a love for the, for the word of God. And friends, that same thing, that same motivation, that same quickening should be in every one of us. We love the word of God. Hallelujah, glory. And he goes on. Let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. For thy law is my delight. Unless, and Psalm, verse 92 of the same Psalm, unless thy law had been my delight, I should then have perished in mine afflictions. That's quite a statement, isn't it? He's so, he's so engrossed and so understanding of the word of God. Oh, how I love thy law. It's my meditation all the day. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the paths of, the, of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Hallelujah. And John 14, verse 21, in, in, to finish with, He that hath my commandments keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. It's just a wonderful, wonderful picture there of that commitment to, to understanding, to walk in the word of God. And then th there's wonderful benefits from this. And David rejoices in, in, a, in a song that's written there in, in, in Sam 2 Samuel 22. He brought me forth also into a large place, he delivered me because he delighted in me. Glory. He delighted me. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from them that hate me, for they were the too strong for me. The Lord was my stay. He brought me forth. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. Hath he recompensed me? How? For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not wickedly departed from my God. There's no rebellion there. All his judgments were before me, as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. 
It's a wonderful declaration of obedience. I was also upright before him concerning behavior and kept myself. That's our responsibility. From my iniquity or the sins that so easily beset us. That's quite a picture, isn't it? Amen. The deliverance, everything comes because of that communion. Yeah. Delight in your, glory, delight in yourself in the Lord. And you know, the, the, old, the old hymn writers, the old hymn writers knew this. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Glory. Angels descending, bring from above. No, it's visions of rapture, isn't it? Burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Saviour am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness and lost in his love. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favour he shows and the joy he bestows are for them that will trust and obey. And Fanny Crosby again, I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me, but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. You know that hymn. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to that cross where thou hast died. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour. <laughs> what a revelation. A, a pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend when I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Are we delighting ourselves in the Lord? Really? <laughs> the evidence will be all around us. Amen. Glory. And the victory is in, is, is, is in that communion with him. It's wonderful. Glory for each one of us. We're in a wonderful position. The blessed position. I've finished. But it's a wonderful position to be in. You know, to delight ourselves in, in, in him, just to, to draw close to him. He's in us. Amen. He's in us. And you know that, the cry of the glory movement years ago, which, he's in you, brother, wasn't it, David? He's in, he's in you, brother, to remember that he is dwelling within you. He's the master of your soul. Glory. When I got saved, I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus, lock, stock, and barrel. And he's the captain of my soul. And I tried to walk as he would want me to walk under his direction. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. And it's a wonderful privilege. Praise the Lord. Aren't you rejoicing in it? I think we ought to sing that, that great old song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forced taste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of blood. Have we got the musicians? Praise the Lord. I should have warned them about this, but I didn't. Let's just sing it together and rejoice in it. See where we go from there. <clears throat> Amen. Blessed <laughs> 
Jesus. 